Hi. So there are probably two things that are universally recognised when it comes to energy. One is that the bulk of the energy that we consume is for heating and cooling. Heating and cooling the environment and heating and cooling water. Heating and cooling amount to an, a massive amount of our energy consumption where the other energy consumed in inverted commas is relatively trivial compared to that one application. The other is energy is difficult to store. Storing energy will be the key to renewables, and we all know that renewables are growing, but how do you store that energy? Because, of course, the sun doesn't shine, the wind doesn't blow, is a real problem when it comes to renewables, and you have to store it. So there's these two ideas. If somehow we could cheaply and easily store that energy, and somehow we could do it directly as heat, we'd have this huge advantage in what it is that we're doing. And of course, what most people think, when they think about energy storage is almost exclusively lithium. Lithium batteries with their in inherent dangers and economic problems. Now if only there were a way to do this. And of course, there is! The Finns have come up with a way. It's hit the news recently and it's on everybody's lips and if you do a Google search on sand battery you'll find tens of thousands of in entries all about the Finnish experiment and the Finnish development of a sand battery. So, what is a sand battery? Well, a sand battery is actually pretty simple. You take the renewable energy and you put it through a resistive heater. You use that resistive heater to heat up hot air. You blow that hot air through some pipes and into a bed of sand. And that sand can be heated up to 500, 600 degrees centigrade. And it's such a good thermal store, it will hold on to that energy for months at a time, given it's big enough. So it's a wonderful material, extremely cheap, fantastically easy to do, invented by the Finns, patented by them, and they're looking to license it worldwide. Hallelujah, we're all saved. However, and somebody warned me, and I believe this, that when somebody says however, it means that everything that came before is about to be criticised, and of course that's exactly what was going to happen. However, this wonderful new invention by the Finns, which has gained its patent, isn't new. And that doesn't surprise me in the least. I found a research paper from NASA in 1979 <laughs> exploring exactly that system. And if NASA are looking at it in 1979 as a developed system, you can bet its history is longer than that. So it's at least 40-some years old as a concept, as an idea. And of course, the Italians are building something very similar, the Americans are building something very similar, and I believe the Poles are building something very similar. This idea of heating up a bed of sand using electric heaters has been around for decades. Now, I give the things that do. They were the first ones to commercialise it. That, I absolutely agree. And I don't quite know what the patent is for, but it is certainly not for that idea, and that idea was certainly not invented by the Finns, but given their due, they certainly are the first ones who have got a commercial scale plant up and running in Finland, and that is fantastic, because I think there's a story to be learned from this, sorry, a moral to be learned from this, and what I think is that people don't get upset when they've never had something. They get upset when they've had something and it's taken away. And the reason that paper was done in 1979 is because that was the height of the energy crisis. And of course, they knew it was then, as well as we knew now, 40 or 50 years ago, the bulk of energy went in heating and cooling. So of course it was a big issue to them. And of course they were looking at it and of course they were researching it. The only difference between 1979 and now is that all went away. Now we're hitting the same problem that we hit in 1979. We've got petrol price increases, uh, wars with Russia, fuel consumption is um, being dramatically choked, energy production can't meet the demand. We've got very similar problems in terms of energy that we had in 1979. So of course we're seeing very similar solutions to those problems. And all that stuff that was looked at in the 70s and the 80s and then put to one side because it all disappeared and we didn't want to change because why would we, is being picked up again now because change is being forced on us because now we've had something that's been taken away and we're getting upset about it. We don't change, I think, because we want to. We don't change because it's a good idea. We change because it's forced on us by necessity. 
So necessity is certainly the mother of invention. And when you meet these terrible conditions, it forces you into thinking about things. And this was exactly what everybody went through in the 70s and 80s. And there was a lot of research done on, that, on it then. And if you think about that word, research, look again. So if you look again at what they were doing in the 70s and 80s, you will find that although these sand batteries are more efficient at utility scale just because of the volume, they were sized and used for home scale storage. And it works exactly like a, a, a heat pump, like a ground source or air source heat pumps, exactly the same thing. Only instead of having special tubes filled with coolant, it's just a big hole that you fill with sand or pebbles or gravel or rocks or whatever it is and then stick your house on top of that or your garden on top of that and your energy cost is involved in pumping the air in and out of that bed because you're not actually heating the air the rocks, pebbles, sand, gravel, whatever does that for you, you're just moving the air and so they can be 90% cheaper. The biggest issue with them is about sizing them for your energy need that is your heating and cooling need. If you get that wrong they're not actually very efficient. If you get that right, then they can reduce your heating and cooling costs by 50% or more over an entire year for digging a hole. Of course, one of the big concerns about the sand battery is the kind of sand it's going to use. Because sand, believe it or not, is a scarce resource. Mostly building sand is pulled from certain riverbeds and certain areas of the sea. And it, um, well, it wrecks environmental hazard, environmental chaos, actually, for the areas. And there's quite a lot of limits on sand mining, sand drifting, uh, certainly in the UK and around the rest of the world. And there exist such people as sand pirates who will go out and steal sand, would you believe it? Uh, and the use of sand in building is so harsh because it can only be a particular kind of sand. And so these sand batteries you'd immediately think, do they need a certain kind of sand? And is that sand actually uh, um, freely available? Because, of course, if we build a lot of sand batteries, we're going to need hundreds of millions of metric tons of sand, and where is that going to come from? Well, again, if you look at the research, you find that the desert sand in the UAE is next to perfect, and it can't be used for building, and they've got an awful lot of it that they essentially want rid of because it blows all over the place. So there is a lot of useful, usable sand out there that we can use that doesn't necessitate dredging it from the sea or plucking it from rivers, but building does necessitate. And so we have that resource there that is tremendously cheap. Economically, overall, a thermal battery using sand is one of the cheapest options that's been thought about. So I take three things away from this. First one, congratulations to the Finns for getting a commercial application of this idea off the ground. Second, the best ideas are usually not that new. And third, we can change it if we want to, but unfortunately we're only actually likely to change it because we have to. Now, of course, I frequently babble on with energy as a strategy, and when we think about energy, we tend to think about those three great alternatives, wind, water, solar. This idea of thermal store in pits in the ground, I have a confession to make, is a relatively new idea for me. I've known about it in the back of my mind for a number of years, but never really brought it to the forefront. And Having the thing like the sand battery being splashed all over the news makes me think about it more and realising that it is in fact something that could be done at the home scale makes it exceedingly interesting because of course sand and thermal energy storage in sand is one way of approaching thermal energy storage. There are others. You can, for instance, use a zeolite calcium chloride mix, absorb the moisture from the air, and that will get hot, and when you dry it, it cools. So there is that as an opportunity that I know is being explored in the northeast of England in new housing estates that are putting up there. So this is something that is being explored, perhaps not as widely as it should be or even could be. And if we want to explore it ourselves, there is certainly that possibility of implementing a system at the home scale, using a whole range of materials that would be part of the energy strategy I keep babbling on about, where we're reducing the amount of energy we need by changing the way it is to service one of the biggest functions that we actually use energy for, and that's heating and cooling. Anyway, I thought I would just 
bring this up a little bit, point out that there were alternatives we could work on and things that people can do that don't require sitting around and waiting for the utilities to do it. It's something we could do ourselves. I hope it was of interest to you. I hope, like you, like me, that it sparks a few ideas in you and gets you thinking a little bit about a couple of other alternatives you might look at. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.